I was also really thinking about the, the earlier discussion we had about biology and the implications for downstream treatments from giving upfront dose or upfront abbey. There's going to be a different, you, you potentially are changing the biology of the cancer as well and potentially the, the follow on treatments may be less successful depending on what they've had upfront. Mm -hmm. I mean, I must say my preference if I was a patient would be docetaxel yeah. in that it's neater, <laughs> it's done, you're, and then you can potentially have a, you know, perhaps several years of just, just, just being on ADT. I was influenced by the data that uh, Matt Sires presented yesterday, yeah. and he showed although overall survival is the same when you have Abbey or Dosi, yeah. time to progression is very different. Much longer on Abbey, shorter on Dosi. But it's not because you're on, but you're on ongoing therapy though, isn't well, it? Well, true, yeah. but I was thinking that would actually influence patients. I would think patients yeah. would prefer that, remaining free of progression for longer. But yeah, it goes back to your point then, if you, could, if you then start Abbey at the time of progression, is that, is that as good? We don't know yet. But what was interesting is if you look at those forest plots, and I don't want to over-interpret forest plots, it's the wrong thing to do, but the overall survival data trended more towards Dosi and not Abbey. You know, so I think you have to be quite careful because actually, you know, we're, just, we're trying to compare apples and oranges and we can't because it's, it's really 18 weeks of docetaxel and years of abiraterone. And I don't think that comparison is a fair assessment. In fact, I would have presented that data quite differently. And I think the disease failure free survival data or, you know, all that progression data is irrelevant in this comparison for me. Right. And, and, and also something very important, I mean, from a methodological standpoint is that it's that kind of hitch of release trial early. Meaning that the reading of all these trial is based on a, a, a on repeat analysis. And basically you define a number of deaths. And when you reach that number of deaths, you look what's happening in the other arm. So meaning that we have a tendency to generalize the result of the trial where actually we are only looking at the benefit of this treatment in the worst of the worst. And that's a problem because many things can still happen with the good of the good. And uh, we, we, my, my view is that overall we, we read the trial too early and, and, and that may have an impact. And that's a problem for the next generation because if you have like, we had the discussion many times with Kareem, piece one, as actually allow using docetaxel quite late. So if you read the result of piece one too early, that will be patients who have not received chemotherapy. So that's why you've got that bio trial, which is called Arasans, which is ADT plus docetaxel, ODM201, no ODM201. That trial is important because this is gonna be the only one where every patient at the same time will receive ADT plus docetaxel. But can I just make a point, and our colorectal cancer colleagues have taught us this, and the point is that actually getting the, in, into the patient at some point before they die, all the, all the active drugs, is really key. The patients that will live longest are the patients that before they die receive will get everything. all the good drugs. It worries me hugely that if you give Abby first, a lot, of, a lot less patients will get those tax before they die. Because actually what will happen is that they will leave them on abiraterone for a long time and they will come to a point where the patients will be unfit or deemed unfit to get docetaxel. And therefore, if you want to give all your drugs, get your patients to get all the active drugs to maximize benefit, the likeliest way of doing that is to give dosi first because it's much, much easier giving abiraterone later. But that's my worry from latitude, for instance. If you look at the number of dead and the number of patients who have received subsequent treatment is far away from 100% of the patients. So we have many patients in this trial which only effective drug they, re they receive was in the active arm, the experimental drug. After that, they have no other treatment. So I agree. I think it's a really important message, isn't it, that our patients should get as many as possible of the life-prolonging therapies. I just want to pick up a point that Johan made. So you were talking about the stampede data that Matt Sides presented yesterday, showing no difference in overall survival. And you pointed out that there was, if anything, a trend favouring docetaxel rather than abiraterone. I just want to make the point that when you looked at cause-specific survival, the hazard ratio was 1.02, essentially 1. So the difference, if there was a difference, was actually in non-prostate cancer deaths. So it did make me actually concerned. You know, is there a worry of abiraterone leading to toxic deaths? Well, I was surprised from the stampede data that a lot more patients than I expected with hormone-sensitive disease discontinued abiraterone for toxicity. 
And actually, you know, I should really ask Bertrand to comment on this because actually from our experience giving Abraft in the late stage patients, we had very few patients coming off for toxicity. Transaminitis is very rare with abirathrone, it's 3% or less. And in fact, we saw a very similar proportion of patients on prednisolone alone getting trans transaminase elevation. You know, so I don't think that this drug is particularly toxic, although there's cardiovascular events that are obviously of concern. Um, you know, so I don't know if you want to comment. Uh, but if you look at the two published paper and you look at the grade five toxicity, the highest number of grade five is in the Stampede Abbey arm. So uh, we, we, we don't know yet because, we, you know, when you have such a small difference between non-prostate and prostate, we know that very well from ADT. There is an excess of death. Where does it come from? From ADT, we've been pointing out at cardiovascular disease from, for decades. It's very difficult, but your observation is exactly what struck me yesterday as well, is that you say, wow, there's no difference in prostate cancer, but there is a difference in overall survival. And it reminds me of something we, the urologists, we know very well, which are the intermittent androgen deprivation trial, where actually, if you look at overall survival, there's no difference between intermittent and continuous. But if you look at prostate cancer death, they are more in the intermittent, meaning that when you need hormone, you need hormone. But then they are more dead from other causes in the continuous, meaning if you don't need hormones, you're going to die from something else. So my worry is that by giving these drugs to everybody for a long period of time, we're going to have a slight increase in death from other causes.